Okay. So, in the last lecture, we have started the Cantor's theory of relational numbers, and in fact, this is another way of introducing the concepts of the real numbers, which is entirely different than the date kinds had done it. So, here with the help of the convergence sequences of a rational number, Cantor's has introduced the concept of the rational and the irrational points. And then he it, later on uh, we will definitely uh, we will show that basically these two approach are basically equivalent, they are not a different, okay, different. So, yesterday we uh, discussed about the convergence part of the rational number, convergence sequence of the rational number and various property. So, let us just recollect a sequence a n of rational numbers is said to be convergent if for a given positive a small rational number f sin l, any positive small rational number f sin l, there exist for a given positive rational number, there exist an integer and not positive integer such that the difference between a n plus p minus a n naught, a n naught plus p minus a n naught remains less than epsilon naught for all p is 1, 2, 3 and so on. Then such a sequence a n of rational number is said to be a convergent sequence. It means that after a certain stage, if these are the points a 1, a 2, a 3, a n naught, a n naught plus 1 and so on. This is a sequence of rational number. The sequence will be convergent if we assign a some positive number, a given any positive number epsilon naught small corresponding to this epsilon naught, one can identify n naught. It means the n naught will depend on this epsilon naught such that if I truncate this series, then after this all the terms of the sequence will satisfy this condition. So, difference from a naught to any other term can be made as small as we please. For example, suppose I take a n to be 1 by n, a sequence of rational number, we say it converges to 0. It is a convergent sequence because take any epsilon l, say epsilon is 10 to the power 10. Then corresponding to this epsilon l, one can find a n naught such that mod of a n naught minus a n naught plus p less than epsilon l means 1 by 10 to the power 10, is it not? And that will be equal to what? This is 1 by n naught minus 1 by n naught plus p. This remains less than 1 by 10 to the power 10. Okay? If I simplify this part, then what you get physically? This is nothing but what? n naught n naught plus p and then p over this part is less than this, correct? p is also positive. So, this is less than, now this entire thing p over n naught plus p, we can already find from here. Suppose, I take p equal to say 1 or 2 anything, then from here we can write 1 by n naught, let it be n naught plus p to be say m. So, m is greater than n naught, when p is, yeah, so m is greater than n naught, then this becomes n naught m and then p, you can just write uh, p is 1, 2, 3. So, we can say p is less than 1 by 10 to the power 10, therefore, n naught into m divided by p is greater than 10 to the power 10. So, m can be obtained. So, from here, m will be greater than 10 to the power 10 into p by n naught, is it not? So, corresponding to this n naught, 
this number, if I choose this number, all the terms which are greater than this number will satisfy this condition, is it not? Will satisfy this condition. It means you can easily find out the truncate the series where this is this happens. Okay, so we can get it this way, not like this. This can also be said equivalently this part. Uh, when we say such then this is a or equivalently here as a or equivalently we can say that for a given f sin r greater than 0 one can find a integer n naught such that mod of a n minus a m less than f sin r for all n m greater than equal to n naught both are equivalent. So, either we can use this or we can use this that one. So, that was the first. Then we have already seen that if a sequence is a convergence sequence of ratio number, then it must be a bounded sequence and the terms of the sequence, uh, uh, we can find out the two uh, a n plus p which can lie between a n naught minus f sin r and a n naught plus f sin r that one. So, this much. Then there are certain properties of the if suppose there are two sequences, various properties the addition, multiplication, and subtraction. Let A n and B n be two convergent sequences of rational numbers rational numbers okay rational numbers then one a n plus minus b n this new sequence may addition of the two sequence or subtraction of sequence is also convergent product of the two sequences a n into b n is also a convergent sequence the division of the two sequences a n divided by b n is also convergent provided provided the sequence b n provided all the elements of the sequence b n are are numerically greater than numerically greater than some fixed positive number k. Positive number k. Okay. We have already checked the first one. This already proved with the epsilon adapter. The proof of this, let us see the others. Uh, this one uh, already done is told, so no point of repeating the whole thing. Let us see. Them. We wanted to show if a and b n are the two convergent sequence of rational number, then their product will also be a convergent. It means we wanted to check basically this condition a naught minus a naught plus p elements less than epsilon. Naught for all this for this. So, instead of this a naught, we will say a naught b n naught a n naught plus p b n naught plus p. If this remains less than f sin for given, then we can say it is ok. So, construct a sequence, consider the difference mod of a n b n minus a n plus p b n plus p. Consider this difference. Okay and for p is equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. Now, this can be written as a n b n minus b n plus p plus b n plus p into a n minus a n plus p. Just adding and subtracting this term a n into b n plus p and get it. 
Now, this is less than equal to mod of a n into mod of b n minus b n plus p plus mod of b n plus p into mod of a n minus a n plus p is it not just modular sign because mod of x 1 plus x 2 is less than mod x 1 plus mod x 2. Now, since a n is a convergent sequence, so according to that every convergent sequence is a bounded sequence. Similarly, v n is a convergent sequence, so this has to be bounded. So, since a n and b n are convergent sequences, so they are bounded, so they are bounded sequence bounded that is bounded that is uh, the exist alpha beta there exist some alpha greater than 0 beta greater than 0 such that all the terms of the sequence mod a n is less than alpha as n mod b n mod b n is less than beta for n all n for all n for all n every convergent sequence is bounded sequence. So, this happens. So, we can find alpha and beta such that this. Now, further b n and a n are convergent sequence. So, we will make the criteria from here. Okay. So, we can get from here is therefore, mod of a n b n minus a n plus p b n plus p this is less than equal to alpha times mod b n minus b n plus p plus beta times mod a n minus a n plus p. Okay. This is okay. Now, since a n b n are convergent, so for any given arbitrary small positive number epsilon, one can find a common n. So, that this can be made as small as we please and this can also be made as small as n. So, since a n and b n are convergent. So, for given f sin r greater than 0 a uh, small positive rational number small rational number. One can find an n an integer n not or n not such that such that mod of b n minus b n plus p remains less than epsilon l over say alpha plus beta and mod of n minus n plus p remains less than epsilon l by alpha plus beta for all n. Okay. Uh, so, this is true a not I have write for all n this can be okay. for n we can find an n such that this holds. Uh, so, instead of n not we can say just n okay. or let n not n not n not n not where the p is 1 2 3 and so okay. by definition. Clear? Now, again pick up from 1, this is 1. So, from 1, what we get a n naught b n naught minus a n naught plus p b n naught plus p is less than equal to alpha times b n naught minus b n naught plus p plus beta times mod a n naught minus a naught plus p huh? change n to n naught. So, that it is 2 for p 1 to 3 and so Now, this is less than ever. So, this will remain less than alpha into epsilon l by alpha plus beta. This is also less than beta into epsilon l over alpha plus beta which is equal to epsilon l. So, this is true for all p starting from 1 to n so on. So, this implies that sequence a n b n 
is a convergent sequence. Convergence. Okay. So, product of the two sequence, convergent sequence is convergent. Clear? Clear? So, this is the proof for the part 2. Clear? Part 2. Now, proof for part 3. Proof. We will show that division is also if the two convergence sequence are there, then one can divide a n by v n, provided the v n is greater than 0 or greater than all the terms are greater than some positive constant k, then the a n over v n is also a convergence sequence. So, let us start with this division. So, what we is again in a similar way, we start with this. So, consider say mod of or a n by b n minus a n plus b over b n plus b. Consider this. So, what is the mode of this? Now, this we can write it as a n b n plus b minus b n a n plus b over b n v n plus b mode of this. And now, again you break up in the form. So, what we get it? This is basically equal to a n b n plus p minus b n and then plus b n a n plus a n minus a n plus p divided by mod of b n mod of b n plus p is it not? That is what is. Now, further this is less than equal to mod of this, mod of this and there. Now, it is given that B n since each term of the sequence B n is greater than numerically greater than or equal to k. This is given. Okay. So, we can say that mod of a n over b n minus a n plus p over b n plus p is less than equal to mod of a n into mod of b n plus p minus b n plus mod of b n into mod of a n minus a n plus p divide by mod of b n mod of b n plus p. Okay. Now, this is given and sequence a n and b n are convergent. So, bounded. So, bounded. bounded. Therefore, there exist a alpha and beta. So, that mod a n is less than alpha, mod b n is less than alpha. So, this is less than equal to alpha times b n plus p minus b n plus beta times mod a n minus a n plus p and since b n is greater than mod b n. So, 1 by b n is uh, less than equal to 1 by k. So, this is k square huh? where mod of a n is less than equal to alpha mod of b n is less than equal to beta where alpha and beta both are positive quantity because of the boundedness. Okay? So, bounded. Now, now pick up the epsilon l. So, for a given epsilon l greater than 0, let it be this equation 2. Okay. For given x and greater than 0, which is a small positive rational number, one can find an integer n naught such that this thing is less than suitably less than epsilon or something and this is also a small quantity. So, we can say that mod of b n naught plus p minus b n naught is less than alpha over alpha over alpha plus beta and then k square we want to remove. So, let it be removed sorry this is uh, f sinal not alpha this is f sinal. So, f sinal into k square 
epsilon r into k square by alpha plus beta and mod of a n naught minus a n naught plus p is also less than epsilon r into k square divided by alpha plus because basically this is very small quantity once you multiply by epsilon r the whole thing becomes very small. So, n naught can be chosen in such a way so that this entire thing is less than this similarly this less substitute this into so put it into. So, what we get is a n naught b n naught minus a n naught plus p over b n naught plus p change n to n naught then we get this is less than equal to alpha when you write this thing you are getting epsilon r by k square epsilon r into k square by alpha plus beta this is also beta epsilon r k square by alpha plus beta and divide by k square. So, finally, what you get k square get cancelled alpha plus beta get cancelled and finally, you are getting what epsilon r only and this is true for all p equal to 1 2 3. Therefore, the sequence a n y b n is a convergent sequence is convergent convergent sequence of this number ok. This is what we get is it ok. Now, after developing this thing Kentos was able to introduce the concept of real numbers. So, what is the Kentos theory of real numbers? Yes, you wanted something? No, no, no. Okay. Controller. But why it is cut? I think it's you have drawn, huh? Mm -hmm. No, no. Yeah. Throw up is going on. Okay. So Cantor's theory. Of real numbers. Okay. What is the Cantor's theory? The Cantor's theory persuades the existence of a set infinite set of object which he call it as a real number. So, Cantor's theory persuades the existence of existence of a set of object infinite set of object of course, set of object which called infinite set of object which is called uh, which is called real numbers and every object of this set is associated with a convergence sequence of the rational number and every any element of this set any element of this set any element of this set is supposed to be is supposed to be symbolically represented is supposed to be symbolically represented by means of a by means of a convergent sequence of rational numbers rational numbers convergent sequence of rational numbers. It means what is the meaning of this is that what the Cantor says that if we pick up any convergent sequence any sequence of the rational number which is convergent then this sequence will converge either to a rational number or to a number which is different from rational that is we call it that they call it a irrational number. So, any every convergent sequence of 
of rational numbers will give gives every convergence equation of rational number gives either a rational number or irrational number which are not rational they call it as irrational number convergent part means every sequence convergence sequence of the real number this there will be every convergence sequence of rational number defines a real number which is rational or irrational and converse is also true conversely and conversely conversely any real number any real number is defined by means of by means of a convergent sequence of rational number a convergent sequence of real numbers of rational sorry convergence sequence of rational numbers so this is the theory given by cantor's and this is known as the cantor's theory of real number so what is his postulate is what he says is that if we have a class of the objects which we call it as a real number then any real number if you picked up then corresponding to the real number we can identify a sequence of the rational number which will converge to that point if it is rational then the point limit point is called the rational reals if it is not rational then we call it irrational but the convergence sequence we can identify and conversely if we are having a convergence a sequence convergence sequence of the real number or set of the real number then every convergence sequence of the real number will give a real uh, convergence sequence of the rational number will give a number which is either a rational or a irrational so there is a correspondence between the set of real number and set of the convergence sequence of rational this is the set of real number and here is the set of convergence sequence of rational pick up any alpha corresponding to this we can identify a sequence xn which will converge to this and vice versa okay now if we pick up any sequence we can find out here the number this so like this okay this theory is given by cantor's but there is a this is a very simple way he has introduced that kind said introduced in a very complicated way what he did he has considered the objects of the points and then introduced the sections and then lower class upper class and then finally he got that rational number and irrational number like that so he had developed the three type of the classes and then into it but he are simply in the part form of the convergence you can say he has introduced the concept of rational and irrational number but what is the drawback main drawback in this is that a real number if i picked up the real number then there are many sequences of rational point which will converge to the same real number uh, Mr. there are many many sequences many sequence converging the same point infinitely many we can find out this is the drawback the drawback of this is the drawback of this theory is this theory is that the drawback of this theory is a, that it does not explicit it does not explicitly explicitly express any express any any single number for example suppose i take the sequence a 1 i choose the number 1 then 1 will correspond to this sequence say 1 
uh, 1 minus half 1 minus 1 by 3 1 minus 1 by 4 and so on that is 1 minus 1 by n this sequence will go to 1. But on the other hand this will also go 1 plus half 1 plus 1 third 1 plus 1 by 4 and so on this will also 1 plus 1 by n this sequence will also go to 1. So, there are many finite sequence are available which can go to the 1. In fact, any real number you picked up this similarly for irrational also it is not only irrational only one sequence there are many sequences of rational which can be uh, generated and whose limit point is the rational number given. So, this is the main drawback, but if we look that finally, in spite of this drawback both the theory are equivalent what the theory gives the equivalent concept and both are equivalent basically. They are not generating an extra element which is not available in the first case means there also we are getting a continuum the entire real line with the help of this also we are getting a continuum. And just like as previous case when we apply the Dedekind uh, theory for sections uh, cuts over the set of real number we are not getting a further extension. Similarly, here also when you apply the Cantor's theory of uh, sequences over that uh, set of real numbers set of sequences of real number you are not getting a further generalized for further extension. So, basically we are not getting a new thing both are equivalent. Okay. So, that is the what you say is it clear. Now, <laughs> there are certain relations uh, like how to define the two sequences two elements are equal one element is greater than other or less than other in the form of the in this Cantor's way. So, let us see some uh, in uh, to define a is a is greater than b a is equal to b a is less than b where a and b are real numbers. Suppose we huh? how to define it let us suppose let sequence a n and b n be the two convergence sequences of rational numbers. which represent the number the real number a and b respectively. Suppose, we have the two uh, sequences convergence sequence of the uh, uh, rational number which represent the real number a and b. Then we say number 1 we say a is equal to b we say the number a is equal to b number the numbers a and b are equal if if for a given f sin r greater than 0 for given f sin r greater than 0 rational number is small okay for a given f sin r greater than 0 there exist a positive integer there exist there exist a uh, integer n integer n such that mod of a n plus p minus b n plus p is less than f sin l for p equal to 1 2 3 and so on. Okay. For p 0 obviously 2 there are no problem for 1 2 3 then we say the two sequences two real numbers are equal means the number represented by this sequence number represented by this sequence are basically equal number for a given. So, for example, if I take these two sequence for example, if I take the sequence 1 minus 1 by n this sequence and the sequence 1 plus 1 by n. Okay. This is our sequence a n this is a sequence b n. Now, they represent the same number 1 and this is also 1. 
So, basically this is say A, this is say B. We say A is equal to B. What if the difference between the terms of the sequence after a certain stage can be made as small as we please. So, if I take any epsilon or greater than 0, choose any epsilon or greater than 0, howsoever small b b, howsoever small, then what is this difference of this will be n plus b minus b means it is basically what difference? The difference will come out to be 2 by n only. The difference of this will come out to be 2 by n, it can be made less than epsilon. So, n must be greater than what n by 2 is a uh, 2 by epsilon. So, after this stage we get all the terms of the sequence are basically very very small very close to each other very close. So, though that sequence looks like a different sequence we are not saying these two sequence are identically equal we are not saying we are not saying that sequence a and b n are equal sequence we are not saying this what we are saying is the corresponding limits are equal corresponding limits are because when the two sequences are said to be equal when they have a corresponding elements are equal okay so that we are not saying by because two sequences are equal obviously they will represent the same point no but since here in cantor's theory a point can be represented in many by many convergent sequences. So, how to define that two limit point to be equal? We say they are equal when only when that these two sequences which are different, but their behavior after a certain stage is within our limit. That is, the difference is very, very negligible, very almost equal to 0 when n is sufficiently large. Then we say these two points, these limit points are equal. Is it okay? this one. In fact, it will go to 0 when n is sufficiently large difference can will go to basically 0. Now, similarly we say similarly we say uh, that is uh, second not that ok. Similarly, we say second part the number a is greater than number a is greater than b if if a value of n can be found if a value if an integer n can be found such that a n plus p minus b n plus p this difference for p is 1, 2, 3 and so on is greater than is greater than some fixed positive rational number delta, some fixed positive rational number delta. Okay. means whenever this uh, a n plus b minus a n is greater than some positive rational number delta then we say the sequence a, a the number a is greater than b. Now, if if n can be so determined determined that the difference is negative that the difference a n plus b minus b n plus p is negative is negative, but but numerically numerically greater than some fixed positive number numerically and is and numerically greater than means without sign numerically greater than some fixed positive some fixed positive rational number delta some fixed positive rational number delta then the number a is taken then 
we say the number a is less than p. Okay. And when equal we have already discussed. So, given any sequence two se convergent sequence which represents the number a and b then one can also uh, identify the ordering between them by seeing this thing. So, this way he has introduced the ordering between the two real numbers. Okay. Now, <laughs> if we take this uh, two sequences a n and b n then whether this a n and b n they are uh, okay. Uh, positive negative positive negative and this positive negative and zero number zero real numbers positive real number in a similar way we can define zero number when mod a n plus p except zero number when the mod of a n plus p is less than f signal okay for certain n greater than there for given f signal we can find a n such that this is true for all p then we say the sequence of this a n are basically going to 0 by mod is there because there is a chance of getting the 0 from the negative side chance of 0 getting the negative cipher it means the elements some elements may be positive some may be negative it may go alternately positive negative but it is opposed to 0. For example, if I take minus 1 to the power n then what happen it goes the plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, but the uh, limit ha, limit of this is tending to 0. So, in this case when the terms corresponding to 0 or when it tending to 0 the sign of the n plus p may vary. But when you take the positive or negativeness, then what happen is when you say the positive, it means after a certain stage, a n plus p must be greater than zero. Must be greater than zero for p one two three. So after a certain stage, the terms may be negative. They are negative here, but after certain stage, all the terms should be positive. Then only we say that uh, the number which is represented by this sequence will be a positive number. When the sequence is given some terms are negative and some are positive, but when n is sufficiently large the terms are going to be positive. So, the limiting point will be a positive quantity will represent a positive real number, but in otherwise if we take the few terms are positive, but rest are negative and when n is sufficiently large the terms are coming to be negative the limiting point will be a negative. So, in that case we say the real number is negative. Okay. So, that is what we are saying. Okay. Next is our the sum difference and the product is defined like this a and b n. So, that is not a problem. Now, as we have seen that the if a n and b n are the two sequences are convergent sequences of rational numbers let a and b and b convergent sequences or convergent sequence of rational numbers rational numbers representing suppose representing real numbers a and b respectively. Okay. Clear? Now, if I take since these are not only the representation, but suppose a dash and a n dash a n dash and b n dash be another sequence another convergent sequence of rational numbers. rational numbers representing the real numbers a and b. Now, question is the question is will sequence a n plus b n 
okay or n minus b n and n days plus minus b n days will give a plus b or a minus b. This is a one set of the sequence a n converges to a b n converges to b. Then we are finding a n plus b n limiting behavior of this will be a plus b. If we take minus then it will be a minus b. Now, what I am claiming is in place of a n b n I am choosing a n dash and b n dash which are the sequences also converging to a n b. Then instead of a n plus b n if I take a n dash and b n dash whether this sequence converging sequence will represent the same sum as the sum of this sequence. Similarly, if the product a n b n and product a n dash b n dash will give the same number a into b. Huh, that is what is a otherwise if it, it gives a different then the entire uh, theory will be fluffed. There is no point of developing the theory in such a way. So, the answer is yes similarly a n by b n where the b n is not equal to 0 of course and a n days over b n days where the b n days is not equal to 0 will give the a by b. So, these are the answers question the answer is yes. Okay. Let us verify one and then we will see. Okay. So, suppose I take one Okay. So, let us consider mod of a n plus p plus b n plus p or minus also minus a dash n plus p minus plus b dash n plus p or minus sign both I am taking at a time plus and minus. Now, this will be less than equal to mod of a n plus p minus a dash n plus p okay, plus b n plus p minus b dash n plus p because minus will not affect much okay, when minus minus plus n become. Now, what is given a n and a n dash represent the same number a. So, by definition the way he has introduced the number a if it is represented by two different sequences then basically after a certain stage the difference can be made as small as we please. So, since these sequences represent the same number so this difference can be made as small as we please say epsilon L by 2. Similarly, this difference can be made as epsilon L as please epsilon L by 2. So, total is epsilon L for all p for p equal to 1 to 3. So, what does it show? That this difference is less than epsilon it means this sequence a n plus b n and a dash n plus p b dash n plus a will give the same number and that number is nothing but a plus b. Similarly, for the difference is it ok and the same trick same case you can use for the verification for the product. Product of these two will the similar way we can write. for the product if you write a n plus p b n plus p minus a dash n plus p b dash n plus p. Then this is less than equal to a n plus p mod of this mod of b n plus p minus b n and then b n dash or dash b n dash plus p sorry this is plus p ok. Then plus b dash n plus p mod of a n plus p minus a dash n plus p just breaking adding. Now, again these are bounded because these are convergent sequence. So, this is less than equal to alpha into mod b n plus p minus b dash n plus p and this is beta mod of a n plus p minus a dash n plus p. 
okay. Now, again this B n and B dash n represent the same number. So, it can be made as small as we please. So, I can make this thing is epsilon L by alpha plus beta by is it not and this also because it is also a, a small con, uh, same sequence. So, after certain step we can make it to be epsilon L by alpha plus beta for all p 1 to 3, but this is epsilon. So, this is true for all p 1 to 3. Therefore, these two sequence basically give the same number that is a. Similarly, the comp, uh, also we can justify. So, what we say that these properties are satisfied with them. Similarly, associative property, commutative property, etcetera can be justified in by with the help of the Cantor's theory that is as a limit of the sequence of convergence. Term. Now, here one more thing, the indices, indices can also be generated uh, defined in terms of the sequence of rational numbers in terms of the sequence. So, this is our indices. What is a suppose I take x be a case 1, let a be a alpha is a positive integer, let alpha be a positive integer. Yeah alpha be a positive integer and x be a real number represented by a convergence sequence x n of real numbers of real number. Okay. Then x to the power alpha this number this is also a real number will be represented by by sequence x n to the power alpha. This is the way he has into suppose alpha be any positive integer and x be a real number which is represented by x n. So, x to the power alpha will be represented by a sequence x n to the power alpha of rational points, these are the rational numbers, is it not? The x n is real, so any integral power will also be rational. Similarly, if alpha be a fraction, be a rational number, say p by q, say p by q, then x to the power alpha which is represented by x n to the power p by q this sequence x to the power alpha is represented by x n to the power p by q and where x n sequence converges to x. Now, only here the difference is since q this square root of this here notice the x to the power 1 by q, qth root is valid only for when x is positive or q is x or if x if q is odd and x is negative and x is negative. alpha is integer and here it is uh, rational. So, p is integer, but 1 by q I am talking 1 by q because this is not this is defined for even that x n be a uh, say uh, negatives, but here x n cannot be negative unless if x n is negative q has to be a uh, odd numbers then only it is defined. So, for irrational case we will see later on thank you very much. Okay. Next class we will see.